Hi, this video is for two audiences, folks interested in CNC vacuum tables powered by a shop vac and formation vacuums. Vacuum tables are all about leaks and surface area. A shop vac can generate three, maybe four pounds per square inch of pressure difference. That's a lot less than the atmospheric 15 psi limit that a positive displacement vacuum pump can reach, but it adds up quickly. A shop vac can put 80 pounds of hold down force on a six inch phone, unless there are leaks. I didn't understand the full importance of leaks designing my first fixture. The air grooves and holes were too close to the work edges. It almost worked, but I had to use hold down tabs and a trick I found on YouTube. Put newspaper under the work or paper towel in my case. That worked amazingly well. But the paper and the hold downs defeat the purpose of a vacuum table, which is simple, fast work holding. I ended up making another fixture, and this one is far better. We'll switch to time lapse shortly to see it in action. But first, let's take a look underneath at the vacuum table base. If I was to make this again, I wouldn't use MDF. I'd use expensive plastic foam board. MDF is so fragile and so porous, I had to paint several coats of varnish. So, about shop vacs. If you Google vacuum table shop vac, you'll find a ton of forum comments about how a shop vac is no good because it uses the vacuum airflow to cool the motor. And that if you use a shop vac to power your vacuum table, it will overheat. That's false. Most shop vacs are wet and dry vacs, and all wet and dry vacs use bypass motors, which have two fans, one for suction and one for cooling, each with a separate airflow path. When the vacuum airflow is restricted, the motor revs high because of the low air pressure around the suction fan. In a bypass motor, that means more cooling because the cooling fan is also running at higher RPM and its airflow is not restricted. Of course, the higher RPM will probably still shorten the motor's life, but it won't be from lack of cooling. I've been using this setup for over 80 hours so far, and most of that in all day sessions. In my opinion, shop vacs are fine for CNC vacuum tables. Now, machining formation frames. It's a two-step production line. Boards go in on the right and have side one machined. They move across to the left and have side two machined. Here, I'm setting up for a new run. As each frame feature is cut, the video inset will show its purpose, and in the process you'll see how formation fits together. Before we move into time lapse and lose the sound, note the bowed left board being sucked flat by the vacuum. First cut is the profile. Perhaps the most interesting profile feature are the little notches near the center of one of the cross pieces. These are for the motor brackets. Next are the holes for the steel strut tie bars and the recesses for the struts to slot into. On side two, we cut the groove for the touch control button cable before changing to a larger router bit and cutting the hole and recess for the touch control button itself. Next are the slots for joining the cross pieces followed by locator pockets for the silicon motor housings. The video inset can't keep up with the cutting here as we show the slot for the all important control board. That's okay though, we can catch up while the LED pockets are cut. Note that none of these electronic boards or cables are visible on an assembled machine unless you turn it upside down. Next, without detail in the inset, we bevel the frame edges and carve the formation logo into the top cross pieces. The last cut finishes the side one profiles which left an onion skin for the end. Before that, we drill small screw holes for fixing all the electronic boards. Now, 
Now as we complete the profiles with the final cut, we also finish the formation assembly in the inset.